A lot of people giving him a pass because he's black. Let's be all the way real, because I see my timeline. Yeah. Jenna, why you keep trying to blame the black man down? Why he keep putting himself in that situation? My job is to talk about sports, sports-related issues. See, nobody said I have a problem when I, when I criticize Aaron Rodgers and his behavior, or I say things about Tom Brady, or Dak Prescott, or Baker Mayfield. Yeah. But lo and behold, somebody with a track record as long as Michael Jackson got hit. Oh, now you say that about A.B. I made a video entitled, Stop with the victim mentality. And that video got widely ignored for the most part. But now I'm gonna come with a part two. And this part two involves the subject of this video, Antonio Brown, and his theatrics on how he left the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they played against the New York Jets a couple of weeks ago. And in this instance, I have to agree completely with Shannon Sharp of Undisputed. We as black people, especially in this country, we cannot afford to be looking to play the victim in anything that we say or do. We don't have that type of leverage in this society. And at the same time, we can't always play the quote unquote white supremacy card. Because if you have the mindset that white folks collectively overpower you in everything in your life, then you're subjecting yourself to being in an inferior position for as long as you live. And I'm here to tell you, I choose not to never live that type of way. There's not one white person on the face of this planet that can stop me from doing whatever the fuck I want to do. And in the same notion, there's not one black person that can discourage me from saying what I want to say, doing what I want to do, critiquing how I want to um, critique, and also being critical. We have to get out of this mindset that we can't be critical in front of everybody else. If that was the case, y'all would have shunned Malcolm X a long time ago. Because Malcolm X was highly critical of black people at times in front of the quote unquote white man's meat. But here's the underlying reality for us as black people. We have to stop depriving ourselves of the truth simply because the truth doesn't sound or go the way that we want it to, to go. Truth is truth. It doesn't matter who says it and how it is said. Truth is truth. And if you choose not to believe in the truth, then stop crying and complaining when people are presenting the truth in front of you. You're choosing to go along with lies and living in a fantasy world. Many of our people are like that. And Antonio Brown is no exception. That behavior he showed on the field, that is a poor representation of black. And I hear many of you so-called conscious motherfuckers talking about, I ain't talking to him at A.B. He ain't gonna let me keep him down. A.B. has been a plant of that system for a very long time. He gets no special privileges over here. No. Now they be tell A.B. To, to behave, to act accordingly. He's not different. He don't get any preferential I mean, ever since he did what he did in New York, that brother has been on count. On, on, on. He's been at a basketball game. He went on podcasts. He did a rap video. He now getting his hair cut with Kanye West and all that. Whole time, ankle don't look fucked up to me. How you doing a music video and you said you got ligament damage in your ankle? And you're, you're walking around as if there's nothing wrong with your ankle at all. See this ankle right here? 18 years ago, I broke my ankle playing ball. To the point I had to wear a boot for three months instead of getting surgery. The reason why I had to wear a boot because without the surgery, naturally the ankle would heal on its own by having something hold it up so that it so the proper healer could take its place. I was in a boot. When I got out of that boot, I still had to go through six more months of rehab. It nearly took me a whole year for this ankle to fully heal. And this ankle still hasn't fully healed because I've sprained it on five different occasions. You, you're not seeing me make no excuse and saying, well, they keeping me down. You know, they ain't taking me serious because they don't want me to play. I broke my ankle while I was in the military. And you know what I did? I took the arduous task of going to rehab 
and building my body back up to where it needed to be. That's how I ended up working out and getting stronger when I was in the military. That Abdullah y'all see right here right now, man, I was skinny as hell back at the time that I broke my ankle. And I was 19. And I built myself up. I didn't allow my injury to keep me away from doing something productive. I didn't allow myself to play victim and feel sad or sorry for myself. I acknowledged my ankle was broken. I had a very serious injury. I rehabbed and I went to work. That's what we as black people have to start doing. Remember, we live in a society that don't care about us, period. But we don't allow that to uh, have us play the victim role. That's our problem. Y'all getting mad at the brother Shannon Sharp for, for calling it out how it is. This is a sports topic and a sports issue. He has to speak about that, whether he likes it or not. So you mean to tell me we can't be critical of each other when we're doing dumb and stupid shit? We're supposed to critique one another. Because when you do right, you should get you know, respected and awarded for it. But when you're doing wrong, you have to be called out about it. You have to be critiqued. And you should be able to learn your lesson from it. Now, a week plus later, AB is reflecting on it. And he's come to the conclusion that what he did was kind of foolish. And I agree as black men, especially in this society. We cannot allow ourselves to do anything that could be harmful to ourselves and to our families. This man cost himself millions of dollars for his antics. Millions of dollars that, at least in the NFL, he'll never be able to get back. And although I'm not the biggest Tom Brady fan and I ain't taking up for Tom Brady, but guess what? That man is a seven-time Super Bowl champion who is regarded as probably the greatest player arguably in the history of the NFL. When you screw over him, you pretty much ruin any chances of you coming back into the league regardless of how good or great you are. I believe the, uh, Antonio Brown reacted the way he did, not because his ankle was injured, but because he wasn't going to get the targets that he needed to get the incentives that he needed. And it's your own fault because you got to ask yourself this. How can a man that averaged 114 catches, 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns over six seasons, why is he playing for incentive-based contract anyway? So look at this as a learning lesson, brothers and sisters. And tell yourself that you have to stay on your, you got to be at your best at every single opportunity every single day in your existence here in this society. You don't have the option of using excuses and then playing the victim just so people can believe your side of the story. We don't have that option. We have to be on the swivel and be on point every single day. And we should be on point every single day. Because as an adult, you got that one major thing called responsibility. And many of our people deprive ourselves of that simply because we're looking to be accepted or validated from other people. Life don't work that way. You gotta go out here and go get it. In the hood, we call it jug. You gotta jug, man. You gotta get your hustle on. And I ain't talking hustling and selling dope or none of that. Hustle means you get on your grind, you produce, and you have your results as a, and, and you generate results as a uh, means of your production. But it's using this excuse shit and looking to t tell all these other versions of this side of the story. Well, when you really break it down, it makes no sense. It makes you look foolish in the end. Because if Antonio Brown was really serious about that injury, he'll be looking back and say, I don't regret nothing. Now reality sets in. And what they say on uh, Minister Society, so in conclusion, black people, we have to stop, and I mean it, we have to stop believing that we're going to get the benefit of the doubt. We've never had that option here, and we will never have it, and we shouldn't, because of the simple fact playing the victim mentality always keeps you at the bottom, literally, figuratively, and psychologically. And we should never be modeling our livelihood or our mindset to always play victim. Take accountability for your actions. Should AB have gotten his money and his consumers? Yeah. Do you think Tom Brady would have gone out of his way 
to make sure AB got his money? I'm pretty sure he would. He did it for Grump. He's done it for other players. He even took up for Malcolm Butler. When Malcolm Butler got benched in the Super Bowl um, against the Eagles when he was on the Patriots. But when you're losing by two touchdowns, you ain't worried about his sinners. You're focusing on next play, next drive, do whatever's necessary to win the game. And that's one last thing I want to touch on. We have to quit this mindset of thinking that somebody owes us something. Somebody don't owe you nothing. You have to earn everything that you desire or want. And once you do that, your appreciation for the things that you have is will be way more satisfying than crying and complaining about trying to get something. This victim mentality is crippling us as a people. And it will continue to cripple us because we, let's go beyond AB with that. In society, black people crying about what white people did to us. White folks collectively ain't gonna never apologize for what they ancestors did in the past. It's up to us to never forget what happened, but we don't keep that attached to us as though we're supposed to hold on to that forever. No. As a father, I'm not teaching my son to, uh, to have a uh, post-traumatic slave disorder mindset. No, I'm teaching my son to have a king mindset. We kings over here, we think like kings, we act like kings, and we respond the way alpha kings are supposed to. That's the mentality the majority of black men in particular need to adopt and, and excel. But unfortunately, we still want to run around here as if everybody has done us wrong. When if you look in the mirror, a lot of times we do wrong to ourselves simply because we have inflated egos, Nobody can't tell us nothing. We have this narcissistic, selfish attitude. And then we wonder why don't nobody like us. Fix your own self, correct your own self. And if you can't do that, stop trying to play a victim yourself. That's going to solve everything. Because in the end, it solves nothing. Peace and love. And I'm out. What dumb dumb you know skip would turn down 30 million in order to play for incentives? Now I want somebody out there to tell me that on your job. They say, you know what? We got a job for you. We want to pay you a million dollars. And you say, nah, I just want to work on an hourly wage. Where they do that at? Cause that's what AB did. AB turned down 30 million by acting like a jackass. He couldn't even get skipped. All you gotta do is be on the roster but come Tuesday. And you get the money guarantee because he's a vested player.